I just completed the next step. This thing is starting to come together real nice. Um, after, after that debacle, <laughs> went ahead and assembled this. Um, I did try to swivel this. This this comes over and it goes over that way to store when you stand this thing up and put it away. This is a hmm, it's kind of difficult to operate with this with this nut in there. Um, granted this is like just been assembled so this paint is fresh and that could be uh, leading to a lot of a lot of resistance. Um, I think though I think though what I would like to have seen would have been some kind of bearing structure here. Um, something that would um, be able to carry the weight of the trailer and then um, yet still allow a little bit freer motion. Because you, you gotta put some put some shit behind it to, to get it to operate. Uh, this is not for the weak of heart, for sure. But if you if you engineer that more, you're probably going to raise the price, and it's going to be more than three hundred ninety nine dollars. So I, you know, if anybody's watching this, um, and it's a year later, go ahead and hit me up. And, uh, and if I didn't do an update on this a year from now, hit me up. I'll do an update on the, uh, the trailer. So I'm interested in seeing how this is going to be. I'll take this apart a year from now and see what kind of wear happens because this actually supports the weight on the trailer uh, along with that. And uh, we'll do some do some autopsy, some trailer autopsy. Almost a year from now, we'll see what happens. So, if I didn't get the update in, and you're watching this a year a year from now, hit me up. I'll do an update on this trailer. Okay, on to the next step. I'm gonna go ahead and start assembling. Go back to step two, and I'm gonna start assembling the back half of the trailer. I will be back to you. I don't think I've discussed how I did the layout on these uh, these uh, trailer frames. Um, here's what I did. I set the, the outside frame in on each side and I brought in the two front and the rear frame. And I went ahead and I drilled down through the hole with a 3 8 inch drill that's long enough to go from here all the way down through to the board. And I went ahead and I put a carriage bolt and the nut on that to uh, to secure it just a little bit. I didn't tighten it down, just went ahead and did it sloppy. And I did that to all four corners. This is how I'm assured that I'm getting a square a square frame because I know the, the plywood is, is square and I know the edges on the plywood are square as well. So I went ahead and did that. Now you have other bolts that need to be set in the middle of these frame rails. So with this middle frame rail, the outer bolts are kind of easy because they line up to a, another hole that's on top on each side. But the middle ones are a little bit more tricky. And the same with other, other holes on the outside of the frames here. So what I did is I got my um, Corbis out with a, I don't know, what size is this drill bit? <laughs> Where is it? I 
Well, hell no. I don't know, but you get the point. The small drill bit. This is gonna drive me nuts if I don't know what size it is. Ah, there it is. Looks like 1164s. 1164s. I just grabbed one out of the stack. I went ahead and put it on here. I said, oh, this looks good. Let me use this one. That's it. That's my story. I'm sticking to it. So I did grab a, a drill bit that, for the uh, cordless. And what I did was, is I kind of went in on an angle. And I placed the tip of the drill bit in the center of the bolt hole that needs to be done. And did this all around, all around the whole frame, then across the middle. Now what I'm going to do now is remove the trailer frame from there because I have all my holes marked out. I'm going to remove the frame and I'll have a bunch of little holes along the line which I'll come back with a 3 8 inch drill bit and hollow them out. Then I'll go ahead and reassemble everything and it should set up to be pretty good or close enough for the girls that I go with. I'm not building a church, so it doesn't have to be ultimately perfect. However, it should be close enough. Just thought I'd let you in on that little tidbit. I'm telling you, I can't see building this trailer without using plywood. If you don't use plywood, it's your bad. Because this thing just, I just can't see it going together properly without it. Um, you will have to get 3 8 by inch and a half carriage bolts. We have a big box store. And also your 3 8 inch. I'm using um, the nylon lock nuts and uh, it, they're very helpful they're very very helpful it about covers it for this uh, update and if I forgot anything I'll include it on the next update okay back at it sometimes when you're using a carriage bolt with this type of nut, with the little plastic, um, the little insert in there, I want to call it plastic, but it's not plastic. Nylon, the nylon insert in there. What happens is that nylon insert will want to turn the, uh, the bolt, the carriage bolt. And chances are what's going to happen is the, the, the bolt will spin in there and it'll out around the square that it's supposed to have set into the plywood. There's two things you do. Um, the first one is take a hammer and hit it on the head of the carriage bolt so you seat it. You can put this into uh, the wood that you're doing. I'm not going to guarantee it, but sometimes that just doesn't work. The, bolt will, the carriage bolt will still want to spin. And if that's the case, what you do is get yourself a flat washer and a nut, a standard nut um, of the size of the bolt that you're working with and tighten it down that way. And what will happen is the, the nut will, will grab up that carriage bolt and it'll sit, seat it real, 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 real nice. And you just back off that that standard nut and then replace it back with your nylon inserted nut remove the washer and uh, you should be good to go I had one of those happen here and that's why I'm in the middle of doing I just figured I'd mention it to you see if it's worth it for you okay I'll be back next update and here is the next step in the saga of the trailer. As you can see, I have both of the parts assembled and on the table. 
I have it on the table because it's a little bit easier to work with on the table than on the floor. But anyways, we're about 200, I don't know, I'd say 25 pounds. That little itty bitty table, <laughs> it's doing its job. I had the rope here so I can hoist this thing up. I stood up this other part right over here and the tongue extended up here. I yanked on the rope that allowed me to go ahead and pull it to me up and over and settle it in. But getting to the reason for this video, <clears throat> the instruction says I can use three quarter inch plywood on top of here. I have three quarter inch plywood on top of here. There is a big problem with using three quarter inch plywood. As you can see, I cannot connect the two halves. <laughs> oh, that's screwed up. They will not connect. They don't line up. Now, it might be because I'm using the carriage bolts. I don't know. But I doubt that's the problem. Word of caution, don't use three quarter inch plywood if you want to be able to fold this up. Now maybe that's proportional dimensions, three quarter by four by eight, but this is a true three quarter inch piece of plywood and it don't fit. The next thing is, I'm gonna go ahead and assemble the trailer and I'm not going to make any, any, uh, any um, changes to this, these brackets, uh, any modifications to these brackets, because I just don't want to do that right now. I just don't have the time to do it. I have to get this assembled and put it in use. Um, I will address this later, and I will correct the problem where I can go ahead and fold it up. But as it stands right now, I can't fold, I can't fold the trailer up. So I just have to store it with it open. No big deal. I'll make those, those modifications later and I'll show you what I did. But for right now, I gotta get this assembled and uh, gotta put it in use. As you can see over here, it's the same thing. The bolt holes don't line up. Now, like I said, that's a three quarter inch piece of plywood, it's a true three-quarter inch piece of wild plywood. <sighs> okay, my bad. Anyways, I'm just going to go ahead and assemble it and just store it open like a normal trailer, but uh, for right now, we're just going to run with it and then I'll make these modifications later and I'll show you what I did. Okay, on to the next limo. I'm going to go ahead and assemble the brackets for the, for the axle, hubs, and wheels. And um, I'm not just going to go ahead and do it right up here on, on top of the table. I got this thing up here. It's easier to work with this at, at waist height than work with it on the floor, just because. Um, one thing is, when you're assembling this, this is the the uh, frame. This is the frame with the tongue on it, and uh, you're gonna want to go ahead and <laughs> if you can get by with it, don't install these corner bolts because these corner bolts are actually part of the assembly here. What happens is. See how that lines up right there? So I gotta remove that bolt to install this bracket, and another bolt goes right in over there too. And then of course the, the leaf spring and the axle and everything goes on top of here. So I'm gonna get to that and I'll catch up with you when I get done. Well, it's all together. 
I still need to put the, the lights on, license plate uh, holder. Um, I'm doing some work up here on the tongue, which I'll show you in one minute. Uh, as you can see, it's it's assembled. <laughs> it's a full four feet by eight feet. And I'm telling you, I love this trailer. This is really nice. Uh, dollar for pound, I think this is a good investment. If you have the patience to put one put one together, I, I, I would do it. Um, just take your time, read the instructions. Let me show you what I got going on here with this tongue. Now, in the instructions, it says to put this part on there before you put the chain on and the coupler. Well, I'm telling you right now, these pudgy little fingers is not gonna hold that nut and washer and chain if you can see there in position and be able to go ahead and get it together so i had to take part of the, the coupler apart and um, actually put it out here and this way it's, it's a little bit easier to get to um, <laughs> i'm telling you this was frustrating this is the most frustrating experience i've ever been through but it's done it's on and uh, <laughs> it is what it is okay so I went ahead and I settled that now I don't know if I helped it or hurt it but I went ahead on this back this back nut right here I went ahead and I ran that through a link on each side um, like I said I, I couldn't see any hurt in it all I can see is an extra, uh, an extra point where the chain can, can um, if, if something were to happen, I, I see just you know three spots where the chain can be secured and not snap off or snap this nut off. Uh, not knowing the quality of this nut, you know. I mean, we hear horror stories, but. So I went ahead and I, I ran the, this bolt through the chain link, one on each side, and um, I also attached it in front here. I don't know. You decide what you want to do. The instructions didn't say that. I went ahead and did it. Okay, I wanted to show you that and uh, just give you a real quick first look at what's going on here. And what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and put put this back on up here and um, put the lights on and then I'll go through all the tools and stuff that I needed to go ahead and assemble this this way you have a pretty good idea of what you'll need to do your assembly <sighs> I see the light at the end of the tunnel folks I'll be back All right, last installment on the trailer, and a little bit of a update. What's come, what's to come? Let me tell you, this trailer, I I, <laughs> I really like. It. For four hundred dollars, you can't go wrong. A couple days to build it. I really wasn't killing myself to do it, but uh, as you can see, I'm already putting it to use. It'll hold almost 2,000 pounds, so there's really nothing I'm going to be carrying that's going to be more than that. Um, good points, bad points. I would have liked to have seen on the channels these holes go all the way through so I can use the holes as a guide, the holes in the, in the channel as a guide to drill out my, uh, my wood. Um, it says I can use three three quarter inch wood here, but you're going to have to be a little bit more careful if you do put wood down on it because I, I can't close it with this wood right now. Um, I'm going to have to make some new hinges, and then I'll be able to do that. Uh, be patient with the uh, trailer wiring. What I did was, let's see if I can find it here. Uh, 
There's these little clips. Let me see. I ain't gonna find none right now. They're probably down, down over there. But what I did is I took the clips that came with the the kit, went ahead and clipped them on. Then I used the hot gun, hot glue gun, to to secure them in place, and uh, that seemed to work out really, really good. In between these two frame sections. There's a hole that you can pass through the wiring to, so you can go ahead and cut the back section. If you're going to be utilizing this as a, as a fold-up trailer, make sure you leave enough uh, wiring in this area because when you fold this up, um, that wire in that area is going to go ahead and it's going to need to come around. So you're going to need a little bit of extra wire right here. Okay? Uh, maybe you can get a, a wire loom mount some kind of wire loom to go between these two sections right here mounted on this side mounted on that side and then run the wire through it and this way the wire loom will stay in place and it'll still allow the wire to come around and bend um, there's that uh, the hubs you can go ahead and, and lube them up but it's a pain in the butt to, to get to the. It's a pain in the butt to get to the oil, uh, the the uh, circ fittings, which yeah, they got to be done. So you just got to reach in there and finagle it. I would have preferred to have circ fittings out here somewhere. This way, I'd be able to um, lube the hubs. Might even go ahead and drill out the hub and place a circ fitting in there. That's an option. So this way, the the hubs can be uh, the hubs can be uh, greased from this side. Um, let's see. I, yeah, I put on a uh, a little deal in front here. Uh, makes for moving the trailer around in the garage with stuff on it a little bit easier. Just uh, trying to pick this up. It's not a heavy trailer at all, but um, when you got it loaded, depending on what you have it loaded with. It could make a big difference in moving it around. But, picked that up at Harbor Freight as well, and it was easy to mount, and uh, it's working out good so far. It swings up out of the way when in use. That about closes out the trailer, because I'm, I'm impressed. I really am. Uh, a lot of good value for the money spent. Uh, the pain in the butt is assembling it, that's it. If your patience can go through it, and, or if you're used to doing this, it should be nothing for you. I'm used to working with tools, so it wasn't that bad. And that's it for the trailer. I hope you liked this video. Click like. As a matter of fact, if you don't like it, I want you to click thumbs down. So I'll give it a thumbs down if you don't like it. Give it a thumbs up if you do like it. And if you like DIY projects, definitely give a thumbs up make sure you leave a comment in the space below um, I'll answer all the questions you got and if you decide to go ahead and build one yourself I sure would like to hear what you've done or see what you've done because uh, I don't know that's what we do in the YouTube community we share what our experiences right so let me go ahead and close this video out and get this posted and I hope you guys enjoyed it Thanks again. Bye-bye.